Hello everyone, I'm Sean, and for my recommendation report, I did an analysis of insect protein supplements for cat and dog food, and this is intended for current and prospective cat or dog owners and insect protein investors. Alright, for an overview of this project, um, many Americans are now more concerned than ever about the effects climate change may have on their lives, but few consider how pet ownership may contribute to this global issue. Uh, with nearly 170 million dogs or cats in the United States, we have the highest uh, per capita pet population in the world. Researchers at UCLA have estimated that if American pets made up their own country, they would be the fifth largest consumers of meat globally. They produce about 30% as much feces as Americans and through their diet constitute about 25 to 30% of the environmental impact from animal production in terms of the use of land, water, fossil fuels, phosphate fertilizers, and biocides. Separate studies on both cats and dogs have provided evidence that insect protein supplements uh, in their diet has no effect on macronutrient digestibility or metabolism. This implies insect protein is an appropriate pet food substitute or supplement for proteins derived from traditional livestock animals. The goal of this project was to formulate recommendations by investigating the perception of insect proteins for pets. The recommendations were informed by the use of data from peer-reviewed research and new data collected through a random survey of 33 participants which analyzed uh, their opinions and preferences regarding pet food and the viability of insect protein substitutes for their pets or prospective pets. Background research uh, can best be summarized by a statement out of the Journal of Food Quality and Preference. Compared to other animals commonly consumed by humans and pets, uh, insects are much more efficient at converting plant calories and protein to animal calories and protein. They require little space for rearing and for most people present a substantially lesser concern about cruelty and rearing or killing. My survey was circulated anonymously among students and professors at UTSA and overall there are about 33 participants who answered a series of 10 questions. On this slide, I've incorporated some of the results of the survey. Uh, about 60% of participants would be willing to supplement 30 to 50% of their pets' protein intake with protein derived from insects, under the assumption that it wouldn't affect their pet's health. 10% um, of participants already supplement or incorporate insects into their own diet, and another 20% would be willing to if given the opportunity. Um, 80% of participants would be willing to spend uh, between 5% uh, and 40% more on pet food that they believed would have a significant impact on greenhouse emissions. And the main determining factors for pet food selections uh, are much like our own. Food contents, price, dietary needs, ethics of the brands, and preferences of pets. In conclusion, um, based on the research done by others and myself, it can be confidently recommended to those who are prospective or current pet owners to consider supplementing some of their pet's protein intake with insect-derived protein. Insect farming is still less common in most places, and for that reason, many insect proteins are more expensive than the traditional proteins that are produced on an industrial scale. So it's imperative that insect farmers receive investment and support in order to drive demand for the product through advertisement and public engagement. Um, in fact, now might be a great time to invest in edible insects. The market size this year is about 1.3 billion and at a compound annual growth rate of 34% is expected to reach 5.6 billion by 2026. The food of the future just might be insects and with the population of the world expected to reach 10 billion in 30 years, it's crucial that we start taking these steps immediately. New ideas often take time to permeate um, uh, the more skeptical among us. Therefore, it can be recommended to those who seek to spread the ideas of novel protein sources to be persistent and steadfast in their support of scientific evidence and innovation. It has become ever more clear that change is going to happen incrementally and requires small, measurable changes such as a tiny substitution of your dog's cat or protein intake. Thank you for listening, and here is my work cited.